I think in our test program we ended up putting something more than 100 hours on the airplane throughout the test program, uh, which is actually quite a bit. And it's actually it was 100 hours of fairly quality testing. Uh, very often in uh, icing program, you spend an awful lot of time hunting for good ice, which is actually most pilots would consider bad ice, but that's what we're looking for. A great place to do that is around the Great Lakes or the Cascades. We're a lot closer to the Great Lakes and we found a lot of it here. Last winter was really a good winter for finding icing conditions and so we got a lot of it. We got some fairly impressive ice formations on the unprotected part of the airplane. We did uh, three different wind tunnel entries to look at things in, in uh, very great detail to ensure that uh, that the um, under basically worse conditions than you can typically find in 99% of the time natural icing we took a look at in the, in the icing wind tunnel as well. We've uh, uh, subsequently built uh, three additional airplanes that we've accumulated uh, over 100 hours each of uh, operational testing evaluation on and continued service evaluation on running the system looking for uh, failure modes, nuisance modes and evaluating sort of our ongoing system performance as, uh, as hours accumulate on filters and on pumps and uh, on systems and in doing so we've identified several uh, system revisions and minor improvements that we've also made to keep the system long duration of performance and minimize maintenance interaction and maintenance requirements and pilot nuisance uh, values. So we've done a very considerable operational testing eval program that uh, I think in customer value side is really going to prove its worth. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its VTAIL design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. I would say for uh, you know a, a proof proof after concept you know and uh, specifically adding to customer value we look at some very specific things that weren't necessarily what's the ideal pilot going to do and what do we tell them to do compared to what might happen if the twice a month dentist rolls his plane out and he has 50 extra gallons of fuel than what he should um, specifically we looked at you know configurations of aircraft that were overweighted it's beyond the limitations but what ha what happens when they are overweight um, and then more to the point even the uh, the icing ACs that we follow there are a few revisions that will happen after our program because of things that we discovered uh, specifically the dry ice shapes that Terry mentioned that we've flown for uh, performance review uh, those ice shapes have to have a certain roughness well the roughness that the AC calls out is physically impossible to do and so what we had con kind of gone back and forth uh, with some of the ACOs as far as what's a, uh, you know, what's a conservative approach. Are they glassy smooth? Are they as rough as you can make them? Are they somewhere in between? And so these are kind of things that get incorporated into additional ACs as, you know, guidance for, for future programs, but that were discovered here. And, you know, that, that's kind of a, a value added that it's done and it's done right. You can't just fly your plane in ice. You either have to go find it you have to have a tanker to make it, you have to make a model to put into a wind tunnel. So it, it's not just things like, uh, you know, testing an engine at, at elevated temperatures. You can go to uh, Texas or, you know, fly at elevated t temperatures. You know, you kind of have to uh, make the situation and, and that proved to be pretty difficult. You know, any, any real life testing either had to be found in natural ice, you either had to make it with a, with a tank or a wind tunnel and so I, I found that to be fairly problematic uh, but you know it's just it's one more detail you have to work through. Beyond uh, handling then we had uh, systems evaluations and our uh, uh, system integration with both the avionics, the electrical systems and the airframe systems uh, was a, a fairly complicated uh, uh, system-wise uh, thing to orchestrate and, and implement with with no nuisance or no understanding system response times, pressure build rates, and uh, uh, normal, uh, normal uh, temperature uh, uh, reactions to fluid viscosities and the like. So this was, uh, you know, literally was, uh, there never was a, uh, uh, a quiet time during the development program between systems testing, naturalized testing, and ice shape testing. It was uh, uh, an all-hands effort literally for a year of, uh, of uh, testing.
Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. And you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navbay. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. This was probably as complicated as any project we've done here at Cirrus. You can do uh, certainly quite a bit of analysis, but it eventually comes down to you actually need to test it, both, both in terms of how does it actually perform in icing. That's really the acid test of this. The, uh, also, because it is a fairly complicated integrated system, does everything function like you expect to? Are there any unusual things that, well, we didn't consider that? So it has been very intensive. I think it probably amounted to something on the order of 15 man years worth of work uh, just on the engineering side to develop this system. A very healthy respect to uh, uh, icing patterns and weather patterns is necessary. And we do recommend a, uh, in our structuring with delivery of the airplane a very involved training program that includes much better understanding of the atmospheric uh, phenomena and, and icing development and uh, uh, conditions that are conducive for and, and less conducive. So a very healthy understanding of, of the system's performance and, and a very cautious uh, expanding of your comfort envelope, I think, would be uh, my recommendation to the average pilot. The system is basically a leader in its class as far as what it can do and the capability it has. That being said, it's, it doesn't make you bulletproof. Getting your instrument ticket means you can fly in clouds, doesn't mean you can go fly in a thunderstorm. Likewise with the de-icing system, it allows that limitation to be lifted that you can't fly in known icing. That being said, certain things you still have to be aware of. No airplane is certified for freezing rain. You know, there are still some rain out there that uh, are um, icing conditions out there that you still have to be aware of. The, the intention of a no ice system is perhaps different than maybe someone who's new to that might think. It's not meant to go out and dwell in severe ice. There are some techniques and tips for, for how you might manage that. Um, and so I guess that would be the biggest thing is, is just to be aware of that. There is some training and some, some additional knowledge that maybe someone who hasn't flown this type of airplane uh, will need to uh, understand.